Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Parameters add a level of flexibility to your reports. Many times you have values that you would like to specify at runtime in a report. A parameter field allows you to specify a value that will be used by the report when the report data is refreshed. Parameters can serve multiple purposes in reports and are one of the most powerful tools that you have to allow for additional flexibility within a report. You can use parameters to filter report data at runtime, selecting which records to display and calculate on the fly. You could also have a parameter prompt you to enter a value, which can then be used by the formula in the report, for example. You create the parameter fields in the Field Explorer pane just as you create many other types of fields. You do have a few considerations to bear in mind as you create the parameter fields for use in your reports. First off, parameter fields that will be used by report group or record selection formulas do not need to have the actual parameter field placed into the report. Simply create the parameter field and then reference it as needed within the selection formulas. Also, you can create parameters that will accept string, number, currency, boolean, date, time, or date slash time values for use within the report. So to create a new parameter field, just select the Parameter Fields entry in the Field Explorer pane, and then click the New button in the toolbar at the top of the pane. This will launch the Create Parameter Field dialog box, where you can specify the settings for your parameter field. The name and value type are the only two required arguments in this dialog box. You can optionally specify the other values as needed. In the Create Parameter Field dialog box, you can type the name of the parameter field that you want to create into the Name text box. It can be up to 255 characters in length, but should be short, descriptive, and easy to reference. In the Prompting Text text box, you can type the text that you want to have appear when the report prompts you to enter the parameter value. Then use the value type drop down to select the value of the data type stored in this parameter. If you click the default values button in this dialog box, you'll open the set default values dialog box, where you can set a default value to be used in case the user doesn't specify a parameter value. You can also use this dialog box to create a list of preset values from which the user can pick the values used for the parameter when refreshing report data. So if you would like the possible values from which the user could select to be drawn from a database table, you can specify the name of the table from the Browse Table dropdown. From there, you can select which field in the table to use from the choices shown in the Browse Field dropdown. The values will then appear in the Select or Enter Value list at the left side of the dialog box. If you had the values listed in a text file which you wanted to import instead, you could instead click the Import button which would launch an open dialog box where you can go select the text file that contains the values you want to use and then just click Open to list the values in the Select or Enter Value list instead. You can then use the arrow buttons to move the selected list items to and from the default values list at the right side of the dialog box. So if you wanted to move all of them over, you can just hit the double right pointing arrows to move them all over to the default values. You can even click into the text box that's immediately over to the left and below the select or enter value label and create or type a value to enter and then just click the single right pointing arrow to move that entered value over to the default values list. So you can manually enter your values as well. In the default values list you can just click on a listed element to select it. You can then click the Set Description button to change the description used for the selected value, if desired. And this would be more common with perhaps text entries or numeric entries. Just notice that if the elements added to the default values list aren't in the desired order, you can also select an entry and then click the up and down arrows in the upper right hand corner of the list to reorganize the entries if desired. In the Options section, you can check the Limit Length for Text 
type-based selections to restrict the data entry of the parameter to a specified size range. You would then input a minimum length and a maximum length into the text boxes provided. If you are also dealing with string selection or text selection, you can also specify an input mask to use for the parameter by typing an acceptable input mask using accepted masking characters into the edit mask text box which would appear. You can also set the display drop down over to the right to either value and description or just to the description to choose what will be shown in the list from which the user selects. If you want to sort the entries shown in the default values list, you can choose a sorting method from the order drop down and then you can choose whether the order should be based on alphabetical or date time ascending or descending order. And that can be based on either the value or the description. If you also wanted to limit the range of possible values for a date time field, over in the options you can check range limited field, which is very much like specifying the minimum and maximum length of characters for a string field. In this case, you'd have to limit the start date time and the end date time to a possible selection of beginning and ending ranges that the user could select from. When you've set your default values, just click OK to return to the Create Parameter Field dialog box. And in this dialog box, if you want the user to be able to choose more than one value from your list of default values, then you can check the Allow Multiple Values checkbox. Otherwise, the user is only selected to specify a single value from the list of defaults specified. If you do select the Discrete Values option, you can choose multiple individual values to use for the parameter. However, if you choose the range values, you can select a range of values between which all of the other values would also be selected, which is useful for date time selection. You could also choose to allow both discrete and range values, which would allow both individual and range selection. Also, you can check the checkbox, which would allow editing of default values when there is more than one value if you wish to enable that feature. Now, whenever you have the desired settings for the type of parameter field that you would like to create set in this Create Parameter Field dialog box, simply click OK to create the desired parameter field. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.